after giving it a lot of thought, LeBron James has decided to take his talents to purchase New York. Somebody that grew up in Northeast Ohio, same age as LeBron, and him leaving Cleveland the first time to go to Miami, just kind of mentioning that in the introduction brought up some bad emotions inside of me. But since his rookie year in 2003, LeBron James has been a paid endorser and been sponsored by the Coca-Cola company. Sprite has been kind of his biggest brand that he's worked on. He's had several different commercials with Sprite. He has his own, I think, Sprite flavor. He had his own Sprite flavor limited edition for a while. He also worked on the Powerade brand. I think he had his own flavor as well. In the 2008 Olympics that was in Beijing, he was also kind of the focal point for the Coca-Cola company with Yao Ming. But I think on the Powerade brand, a lot of that has kind of subsided over the last couple of years because of his ownership in Ladder, the supplement company that I had mentioned before had just been acquired. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll pop up that one for you guys right here. But he has been seen like post pre activity or, or games, uh, drinking ladder supplements over Powerade. But that longstanding contract with the Coca-Cola company had ended in September of 2020. So LeBron James being the second highest athlete endorser in terms of earnings last year and the fifth biggest earning athlete as a whole, was essentially a free agent. And if you're wondering maybe who was first in terms of the athlete endorsers, that was Roger Federer. He made $100 million. And then LeBron James was actually tied with Tiger Woods for $60 million. So being a free agent, LeBron James had some options and really it was probably came down to two options, really. The first one is, do you use your massive distribution, your massive star power, and create your own beverage brand? Now, what subcategory or type of beverage that could be, who knows? The Rock just kind of came out with his own energy drink recently, and just announced that with an exclusive partnership distribution deal with Molson Coors. So LeBron James has that and more in terms of power to be able to get you know anybody to distribute that beverage if he wanted to. Odds are he just didn't want to be in the beverage industry. He didn't want to be a beverage entrepreneur. I don't think his internal team, like the LeBron Inc. team, really wanted to kind of take on a beverage. I think The Rock's a lot different. He has a few other beverage plays already. So he kind of knew that business a little bit more. So because he likely did not want to own his own beverage brand, you know, the other option is to go with the hated rival of the Coca-Cola company, the other largest beverage portfolio in the world, and that's PepsiCo. And for those that are not aware, the Coca-Cola company and PepsiCo are heated rivals similar to you know, Ohio State and Michigan college football, or North Carolina and Duke college basketball, you know, Yankees, Red Sox, Lakers, Celtics. That's kind of what these two beverage brands are about. They're constantly battling across every single subcategory. Within the basketball community, PepsiCo has also started to get itself entwined into the NBA and, and WNBA. In 2015, PepsiCo did become the exclusive food and beverage partner for the NBA and WNBA. This took away the Coca-Cola's contract that they had with the NBA for 28 years. But instead of the traditional like Coca-Cola soda brand and using Pepsi as soda brand to kind of really be in the NBA contract, they actually use their Mountain Dew brand as kind of the leading brand that they're gonna focus on the NBA and WNBA partnership. And that's where LeBron James is going to be at even though there are reports that he could become the face of the Pepsi soda brand, but they also have not really noted if he's gonna be involved with the Gatorade brand or any of the other brands within the PepsiCo family. But instead of being attached to just the general Mountain Dew brand where PepsiCo has already kind of utilized NBA stars like Joel Embiid and Zion Williamson for different commercials that are reaching the younger demographic, 
LeBron James is actually going to be the head spokesperson and face of their new energy drink called Rise Energy. Now I wanna take a quick intellectual property detour and note that I am good friends with the owner of Raise Energy and I've had Chris on my channel. If you guys wanna watch that video, I'll pop it up before you guys hear. I don't necessarily think that there's any crossover here between Raise Energy and Rise Energy, but there could be you know, a little bit of leverage points and things that could be worked out. Raise Energy being a smaller brand could benefit somehow if there is an agreement that might be able to get struck between the two companies. And then in terms of Rise Up Supplements that does have a pre-workout energy drink, I guess you could say, I do not believe they have anything in terms of IP of the beverage kind of category. And it is important to note that PepsiCo has owned the Rise Energy intellectual property since the early 2000s because they do own the Tropicana Juice Company and they had a brand called Rise Up for a little bit. I think it has been abandoned. Nobody's used it for a while. I think also it would need to be refreshed because a lot of like the categories that they were offering were more around juice products and like non-carbonated juice products. So what does that mean? I don't know. I'm not an intellectual property lawyer or anything, but I thought it was important to note. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. You might be asking yourself, doesn't Mountain Dew already have an energy drink sub-brand? Yes, they actually have three sub-brands if you're not that much aware of it. The first one is Amp. That's kind of like a traditional energy drink offering. They also have Kickstart, which is kind of like a juice plus energy offering. And then Game Fuel, which is kind of functional or performance based, but mostly traditional in terms of what I would consider an energy drink, but it is focused on the video game, gaming, esports community. It's unknown at this time, like how Mountain Dew and PepsiCo is gonna clean up that hierarchy or, or product portfolio and all those different kind of sub brands of energy. It seems a little bit confusing right now. I don't necessarily think they need to have all of those, but probably gonna wait to see how Rise Energy ends up doing. But all this talk about energy drinks kind of brings up the war that's happening in the energy drink market right now. In March of last year, PepsiCo actually acquired Rockstar Energy for $3.85 billion. And for most people, they just thought, hey, this is a longstanding exclusive distribution partner that PepsiCo has worked with for a long period of time. You know, it makes maybe sense to buy the fleeting brand. Maybe they're able to reinvent it or just put a little bit more distribution power, marketing power, and get it to be refreshed and revived. But most beverage, industry practitioners like myself just really saw it as they had to clear the path for flexibility in the energy drink category. The Rockstar Energy contract did not allow them to have any other kind of energy drink brands. They couldn't distribute other energy drink brands, anything like that. So they needed to clear out the Rockstar Energy roadblock so they can kind of go for some bigger ambitions in the category, a category that now is growing 10 or so percent year over year. It's a 13, 14 billion dollar US market. So this is a big, fast growing, highly competitive market that you need to be able to have full flexibility and you know be extremely aggressive. Now the first move that was made right after the Rockstar Energy acquisition that cleared the way was that they signed an exclusive distribution deal with Bang Energy, like hyper growth brand that really everybody was wanting to be a part of and distribute. The second move for PepsiCo was to rework and kind of revive and, and really kind of put some more effort into the Game Fuel energy drink sub-brand of Mountain Dew. They are now like really focused on the gaming community. They have a new direct-to-consumer experience. They have some new products. They have some new partnerships. They're really going very deep into the gaming community with that offering. Now, after that, most thought the next move was going to be probably like a Pepsi Energy product, but because Coke Energy has really like limped out of the gate uh, for the Coca-Cola company, I think Pepsi's looking at and saying, maybe we shouldn't go in that direction. Maybe that's not where the market would like. Maybe we should just kind of sit and wait to see what happens with Coca-Cola company, let them take on all the risks, and we could just kind of follow with a defensive product strategy after we see what happens. But to circle back to the Coca-Cola company, before the PepsiCo's acquisition of Rockstar Energy, 
Coca-Cola company was kind of sitting really pretty. They had a minority ownership in the Monster Beverage Corporation. The Monster Beverage Corporation has been doing extremely well over the last decade. But now that minority ownership in the Monster Beverage Corporation really creates them not many options in the market. They were able to get an arbitration to launch their Coke Energy product. Um, that hasn't done all that well. Um, but outside of that, they really can't create their own energy drink brands. They can't work with other energy drink brands. So they're at this point where they're kind of stuck with the Monster Beverage minority ownership. So I thought that this year really would have been the year that they made a move. Either they went all in and bought the Monster Beverage Corporation and all of the brands that are part of that and then had some flexibility or they decided to kind of create some agreement with Monster Beverage Corporation that they sold all or some of their ownership in exchange for flexibility in the energy beverages category. There's likely three reasons why that has not happened. The first one is the PepsiCo relationship with Bang Energy has been extremely rocky. They've already kind of sued, countersued, countersued back to each other. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if PepsiCo is still selling Bang Energy to the same extent, or they're just kind of really just trying to be vindictive and maybe not sell the brand. I don't know what's going on there, but regardless, Coca-Cola's company is looking at that and saying, okay, we have a little bit of time to breathe now because we are not falling extremely behind because if the Bang Energy deal went extremely well, the Coca-Cola company would have had to make a deal and moved extremely quick or risk losing out on one of the biggest, fastest growing categories in the market. Secondly, Rockstar Energy hasn't really been jump-started all that much with PepsiCo's ownership. Um, it's still not really picked up or picked up materially enough to matter. And then there's also the COVID-19 uncertainty that's still in there. It's, it's getting better each day, but as Coca-Cola is really kind of into the food service area. They have a good amount of their business that is moved through food service and that dragging down the business as a whole, you know, it's just better to be a little bit more cautious right now, especially they're cost cutting, they're cutting brands, they're doing a lot of different things to really shore up their business. Don't get a little bit wild when you don't have to. And if the market and the strategy chessboard right now is telling you to kind of just sit and wait and see what happens, if PepsiCo makes a bad move, that's kind of the position that they're in right now. Just to end this on some final thoughts, the LeBron James move certainly helps PepsiCo. I think in the energy drink war, more likely than not, it helps more on just the beverage battle as a whole between PepsiCo and Coca-Cola company. LeBron James is a global brand. There is millions upon millions upon millions of people that are paying attention to what he's doing and that does have influence in the market. LeBron James has had a pretty great track record in terms of the business side of his career so far. He's had kind of the Midas touch in a lot of cases and him being kind of the face of this brand, it really kind of gives him the opportunity to see how strong is my brand in a fast moving consumer good where I'm kind of being leaned on as the focal point. It's unknown how that will do in the competitive, extremely competitive energy drinks market but it'll be very interesting for us to see how that plays out over the next year or two. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.